in the previous financial year, the industry generated over 59 billion in gross gambling revenue, of which uh, 4 billion plus was paid into the taxes. Contribution of online gambling, comparing 2021 and 2024, they actually generated around 39 billion. In year 2021, they were at around 9 billion. With uh, online gambling, there are, there are structural aspects that are intentionally uh, designed in a particular way uh, to draw people in. <sighs> you know, even just talking about it, in Jim Chaisa Movad. So I think it was uh, 2022, a friend of mine introduced me to, to Hollywood Bet. Um, at that time, I think it was just soccer because Aviator was not there at that time. 2023, when they approved me, I think it was the time where they were, where they introduced uh, Aviator. Hollywood bets, ready to take to the skies. Aviator, you're clear for takeoff. Second bet, coming in hot. Keep your eye on those multipliers. It's on now. Remember to cash out when you're ready. That was crazy. I'm catching out. Woo! See you back at base for the next round. I'm going big with Hollywood Bet. Aviator, it's your chance to win up to 10 million rand per flight. Hollywood Bet, fly higher with us. It was the only thing that I was I was betting on. 2023, it was all fun and games. I was I was buying Ama vouchers like 50 rands, 100 rands. Never bought anything more than 100 rands. And then in December, um, I bought a voucher, 140 rands. I remember exactly it was even the last money, cash. It took me to close to 7,000. Then I was like, oh, you, there's money here. So I was like, if a voucher 140 rands can give me you 7,000, what if I buy more? How much would I get? I a voucher 250 rands, not once a day. 250 rands, the way you come back later, you buy another 250, or maybe I will win. Like I'm, I'm feeling I should go to Bengal, Bengal win. So what I like, I think between March and April, it when I was like in in way, I would buy voucher two thousand. And when you are when you are addicted into gambling, you lose the value of money. Like you just don't care. Like they will, they will chow your 2,000 rands, you won't even care, it will be like nothing. And then again, that to 2,000 months, again you go and buy the voucher, whether the 1,000, no matter 2,000. And then after that you start borrowing money from people. Or Mashunisa, you come with all sorts of lies to get money. Like there was a time where I bought a voucher for 2,000 rands, my car was sitting on zero kilometers. And <laughs> there was no food in the house. We were living on bread and eggs. You know, sometimes once or twice in a week, we don't cook. We go and get takeaways. But for those two months, March and April, I tell you, I've never driven to even one drive through to go and get my kids McDonald's or KFC or, or whatever that they want. Uh, I've used a lot a lot i would stay up until my salary comes in at 12 by the time i wake up at six there's nothing i realized um that i had a problem when when i decided to to do a list of all the people that i was owing so the people that i was owing it was loan sharks only and the money was over was just above eighty thousand and they didn't know that I was gambling. But roughly, I think I've spent more than 250000 into gambling. So I was planning to, to resign from work so that I can cash up my pension and pay all the people. Because when you owe more than 20 people, you don't have peace. 
Um, when I started, I would put in about 50 rand. I would win like uh, 2,000 rand and or 100 rand. I wouldn't go beyond 100 rand. Every time it will be like 50 rand and stuff. Uh, the other reason that made me start gambling, I think it's also the fact that I do not have a lot of friends. I'm someone who's always indoors. So it was something just to put a borulla. When I'm bored, I would use that as something. So uh, I think it got out of hand. When I got uh, too deep into gambling, I would like bet. I would like Voucher 500. I Voucher 500 at a go. I was now addicted to e gambling. I wasn't doing it because I needed the money. It was just to, for me to feed the demon. It was like a demon. It needed to be fed. Even when I'm at work, I would go to the toilet. I would sit at the toilet and start gambling. Then the manager started complaining about my performance and stuff and said, you know what, you're starting to slack. We don't understand what's going on because we don't know you like that. We know we see you are someone who's hardworking. Problems in Zahori gambling, it will ruin like a relationship with Haulebatu because you end up borrowing from a lot of people. You owe a lot of people money. How phone are now? People can't even take your calls because they already know Kore. This one is gonna ask for money. This one is gonna tell me a different story. If I estimate Kore how much I've lost the goal gambling over the two years, it's it's a lot of money. Uh, plus minus let's say let's stick to a hundred. Plus minus a hundred K. Like it's a bit way, it's a hot hot. It's called hot hot. The reason why I got addicted was hot hot is because there was a friend at work who is also playing it and she was always winning. The problem with gambling, if I'm gambling and I'm losing, I'll never tell you, I'm losing. I'll only show you when I'm winning and say, you see, this is how much I got today. And you believe that's how it works. If I go and gamble, I'm going to win. I think a friend of mine introduced me to gambling and then it was back in 2021. But it didn't go in jail, you put a 50 rand, and then yeah, and win a little 50 and be like, oh, there's extra money in it. And then it became worse again when my financial situation was like lacking and I needed more money. I was like, okay, the only place in my Fumana email, rather than having to ask people for money because I didn't have a support system financial because my mom is not working, didn't go to seven times. And I have a son who I recently found in 2021 that he's autistic. So that there were a lot of emotions going gule on dole and I was like, okay, gambling is gonna help me put in for money mali and put my son who is called a right in and then yeah. So um from fifty rand, yeah, two thousand, yeah, no. I mean I think I won the first time, the second time I won, the third time Dafagum Holwam won. That's where things went like downhill because now I'm going to get a rent. I need to transport myself from Sevenzin. So, like, there's a business one, there's a business in Okay, I'm going to know. You understand? That's when the long loan charts they came in. I said, no, who's a mega man? Just to go to you cover yourself. I'm going to get the money 3,000. Ah, me again. I'm like, I want to triple this money to 51.5 from the 3,000 rand. Remember, I still haven't paid the rent. Um, I still haven't put it aside to money for transport. Depending on 51.5. Luckily, the band. So let me let me pay the rent in my land. I go be right. The corn was given to because being given to me, but so I used to buy a weekly tag. The given and given, but the urges man be like, no, 
remember now you have S is going to say 4.2. It became like an everyday thing. Like, and some days very well, but some days you don't. So it ended up with I'm not able to pay back your mama. I have to pay her in Inzala, which is interest 1.2. I think oh, she's cool with it, it's fine. Did you say who pay 1.2? Remember, I'm having money left and I paid the rent, man, man. Depending on the fact you won't get the money there. Depending on the way, you understand. Depending on the end, this is so silly. Another person who will not track, besides the one that my friend introduced me to. This is so silly, long, long. Remember now, with the, the deaths. That escalate. Another thing, the stupid thing that I did, in DT for my accounts, um thing in this value good every trip because I'm like to myself, I mean there's a way I can quickly make money twenty twenty one. And then in twenty twenty one the for my new job, I start going go much. Now I used to come to work I need to angla no gla book. And send this value my slots, send to me like my game. Oh, I'm a slot, but no more shall long three AM more shall long do 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 me. So man just saying long do every time I get in my am exactly midnight saying dream room. Until like in Shalang I used to lay up because I'm a slot one uh fuck and money can be like hi this will this will win fucking low thousand rand until you to figure who's zero on a bin of mali at all. I'm saying seven seven zero now. Saying to fucking the bag of paradise. He paid day no good. It's a normal day. He a fan again. Me I'm seven zero. I'm happy like I'm happy. I'm happy. Vugenje. I'm like I'm going to work. And then there, there was this one lady. We got clean a lot. I if you look straight up in seven zero. She was like we are kids. And I was like I go just a hump. We go. So it 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 became more. It was more. Then I got my first warning because that owner of that practice used to come in just surprisingly that she gave me my first warning. She was like, no, you do have potential, but I feel like there's something that's grounding you. Okay, I took I took a step back and I was like, okay, I kind of need to that means I can run it for two months, but then that will So now the time man is saying on the mic, we are and that's why the stock fell in me. That you know, the stock failure will help me to do good things better than the equally the leases and that. Remember, I still have no no man, my loan man in Tata Wheel. So the cycle will go to the Bolegi Mali, day 25, next 25, I have to pay back and then borrow another one to good things. So as a killer, no good things, but I'll be ready to good things. Feed the whatever the addiction will be now. You understand, like in the other labs. I was the second person to stop failure and then there were people after me who stop And then the one I was the second person to stop failure. And then there were people after me. So I figured I'm a man that I forgot to get I never regained any. And I think it was 8,000. And the one I was the second person to stop failure and I This thing even at high is okay on the time. Family is a yega. But I'm man, it's time I'm man. This is this is the win. I mean, by a win, I'm on Facebook. I'm going to get ten, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand rand. Ten thousand, I'm going to so I won't be mad. So you understand? It became a cycle until this day, the way out of control. I was a laughing stock. Like le le, I tell you, I'm the other thing I think I explain. Like it's unexplainable. In the in the in the in that in my baby yo towards Guti. Like in the funa, that thing in that it fit me, fit me. Uzo we now, uzo ba right, uzo ba. And the less stress, uzo guti manje. Like as a, as I was not saying good anything. Like basic stuff in J is very basic because manje. No be more dear boy and detail and funa kembleisha this man. If he lele manje le ni manje ako. You understand? Kuba na manje. I'm still paying about and that ba owa like. Back in 2022. I think it's important to say that while certain factors can heighten someone's risk uh, to addiction, and addiction can occur in anyone, right? So uh, it's not as though people are starting to gamble or use substances, for instance, with the intent of becoming addicted. 
And we know this is especially too with gambling because it's, you know, marketed as a recreational activity. But for a proportion of people, it then becomes addictive. We know also that there are high rates of depression and anxiety and other issues. People do commit suicide as a result of the problems they experience with gambling. So I think there are ethical aspects that need to be looked at. And all of the responsibility for managing a gambling harm should not fall to the person with the addiction. There are factors such as mental health factors or even having a family history that can put one at risk. But again, it's more like um, a range of factors coming together and under the right circumstances can lead to addiction for some particular people. I also think it's important to say that much of the literature that I read when I refer to what's been done already is conducted outside of South Africa. So although there is quite a lot of research in the gambling arena, there's really a need for research in our context to make clear what the risk factors are, who might be at risk, and how that comes together. So a lot of what's known is sort of from the outside and is definitely useful, um, but it's more nuanced, uh, and there might be certain contextual factors that you know that are important when it comes to to risk. So, and in a context such as ours, which is very unequal, most unequal country in the world. I think poverty and income inequality is something uh, very important to consider. So there are those links already. So of course, by the time that someone develops a gambling disorder, there are financial ramifications, very serious financial ramifications. But having a, a low income in the first instance can predispose someone to, to might want to gamble in the first place. Much like other addictive behaviors, gambling also has an impact at the brain level. So we know that it activates the reward pathway in the brain, which gives one a pleasurable feeling. And so that can also stimulate one uh, to continue. In the past, the casinos were located in the outskirts of the towns and uh, people had to drive and, and go to those places. But now, with online gambling, it brings us that home. Gambling has just been normalized a lot. People gamble a lot after this aggression in terms of offering bets online because they also include games that are for casinos now. In 2008, a legislation was passed uh, by a parliament uh, that the National Gambling Amendment Act, that act has not been brought into operation, but it was intended to regulate interactive gambling, which is online gambling, basically. We at the national level, we were supposed to license the activity that would have been deviation from the national norm that we are embracing at the moment because National Gambling Board is responsible for oversight on the provincial licensing authorities, which is provincial boards, to make sure that when they license uh, casinos and other modes, they follow the principle and spirit of that was set out in the National Gambling Act. Because the main principle is to ensure that we do not proliferate, increase the spread of gambling. Uh, such that it is unmanageable. When you look at the casinos, the ATMs are not located right on the gambling floor so that people can actually have an opportunity to pause and walk. They might reconsider uh, gambling. But now, online is actually bringing that speed. And this is exactly what the 2008 legislation was trying to address as well, to say players must set limits that they can actually put in the gambling account so that when they transfer, the limit will actually block them to say you can continue now, you have reached your limit. But this, because that legislation has not been passed, this is the challenge that we will continue to embrace. But those who are offering betting, uh, they are allowed to go online. So only those who are offering, so bookmakers are the ones who are allowed to go online. If anyone is operating an online casino, you see a roulette machine or bergamot or any machine that is offered in casino slot, uh, those ones that you spin and everything. Those games are not yet authorized online. So anyone who's offering them is doing so illegally. But like I said, the other caveat is to check that who licensed these people and it should be one of the provinces in South Africa. If it is a person outside the country, then it's not legally, legal in the country. Betting is a situation where you come put a bet and say this soccer team will play and win this match and everything and you go and wait for the results. But now these ones are actually expediting the game. You can press a button and then the wheel spins and then you can actually sit on your phone the whole day. That That is not yet permitted in the country and unfortunately it is happening now with impunity to our loss. And uh, there is a number of gaps. We are now experiencing teams that are sponsored by illegal uh, operators that come and sponsor our 
sporting activities. And now those people gain exposure and they appear legitimate to our people. And there is a gap because our legislation only deals with advertising or sponsorship. So we need to actually go and address the part about sponsorship in the legislation to ensure that everybody who offered the sponsorship is not actually allowed to offer their adverts as if they are licensed in the country. Unfortunately, our regulations are not going to the extent of preventing the advertisement's time schedule, time schedule to say it should be broadcast at this time. All we require is that these people must have a responsible gambling message displayed and it must actually be visible or audible if it's on the radio uh, for some part of the advert. And that it must also not be meant to entice the kids. It must not be on channels that are actually meant for kids uh, during uh, the day. Something else that triggers uh, a lot of people gambling now, we have a lot of advertisements for gambling. When you open your TV, it's gambling advertisements. Billboards, when you're going home, it's gambling uh, advertisements. So I think people are starting to believe that it's, it's okay because it's advertised every way. And now it's even worse because it's everywhere. I listen to the radio at work from the morning. I tell you the number of times I hear they advertise Lotto Star, Hollywood Bet, Betway. It's, it's shocking. And then on TV, you're sitting, it's family time. You're watching something on TV. There's Hollywood Bet, there's Betway. It's everywhere, billboards, it's everywhere. Most of the people are gambling with the illegal sites. And as a result, generally, there's just no protection there. And there is just no guarantee in terms of how we can. But our licensed ones are, are actually required to do the know your client customer principle. Uh, and that know your customer principle actually basically can show that this person has spent so much time and everything. So online gambling can actually assist in future if it's regulated properly to identify people who are depicting those uh, signs that they've actually spent too much time on the gambling. In Singapore, you won't gamble if you are on social ground. So they will actually look at your ID when you are entering the premises and it will show that you are on social ground, you are not allowed to gamble. But here in South Africa, you get your 350, you can gamble all of it. Because we do not restrict, we trust people, we are a democratic, we don't control intrude a lot in people's lives. I know that in countries such as Belgium, for example, there's been limits placed on advertising and also what's been done abroad is that there have been limits, limits placed on how much can be gambled, say through a, a set account in a given week. Now um, our banks, you're allowed to buy a voucher at any time. Like you can just go online or it's like I'm a or APSA or a bank or a voucher, yeah, how, any amount that you want. So you see, it's easier when you have a thousand rent in your account, it's easier to lose it in five minutes because it's not like it's 12 o'clock, the shops are closed. Uh -uh. You're just going to buy it online and continue to gamble. There's also something to be said about not physically seeing your money, financial abstraction. So the fact that the money is just a number in an account and you're not physically seeing the money, also plays a role in how much people might spend online when it comes to gambling or online shopping. So there certainly is, a, I think, a role that the banks can also play in, in, doing, in doing something with, with regards to limiting harm. You know, with these sites, they very, when, when you want to withdraw, they will tell you that the banks are offline. And they know that a compulsive gambler will never leave money there. You will keep on trying until you are on zero. So I deactivated e Betway Yam and then I deactivated e Hollywood Yam. I think the the lender was done a good You're not gonna do it anymore, even because the adverts is the Hollywood is there everywhere. Betway, Mountain TV, they always play. But as the lender by lender really damaged me. There was someone who posted on Facebook. Um, she was crying, saying that she got paid. All her money went to Hollywood. And then the lady commented, 
from the WWGI um, group, Winners Without Gambling International. So she, she commented and said, gambling is not good. I started buying 50 rands voucher, 100 rands voucher. I ended up buying 2,000, 5,000. I'm borrowing money. So when I read her comment, it was like I was saying it because it was exactly what I was going through or what I, I, I went through. And then I sent her an inbox. I DM'd her and then I said, I saw your comment and can you please um, tell me how did you quit? Like what helped you? And then she just sent me the link to the WhatsApp group and said, uh, join this group. I joined this group and then it's how I joined. And the minute I joined, they will ask you to share your story, how it has affected you, what are you doing to, to regain yourself, to recover from the losses. And then they will guide you and tell you that you need to list down all your debts. And if you need them to help you to negotiate, they are also there, they do that as well. And I thank God that um, I met um, the lady I met on Facebook. And then, like, if you think of it now, resigning if, at work to cash out your pension fund just because you owe 80000 And that money, I kid you not, I know that I was going to spend it all on Hollywood. So I decided that I want to quit. And then I went on the app to to deactivate there's no option to deactivate on the app so i signed out and then i signed in again i could sign in and then i had to call them so when you call them they come up with all sort of stories to try and convince you to stay on the app they will ask you do you want us to close it off for three months i was like no for six months no for a year i was like no just close it forever, like permanently close it. And then they said I must send an email. It is definitely not what the exclusion program is about. Uh, they are not supposed to do that. They are not supposed to do that. Uh, and a person who wants to be excluded must be excluded. And they must undergo treatment with the South African Responsible Gambling Foundation. And they will issue a report that this person has completed all the programs. And with that report, the person can actually come back and say, can I be readmitted and delist from the uh, exclusions program? And then that's how it should be, not, not a comfort break. And of course, when we think about relapse or continuing to use, we think about triggers, right? uh, aspects that need to be managed when somebody decides they want to make a change. So we know that motivation fluctuates and it's really about providing recovery support and strengthening the side of the person that wants to stop. So in moments such as that, it could really be high risk um, for someone. There's no way where you can get rich by gambling. Gambling has only to reach. It's only going to put you in depths. And then I've realized for a, um, a lot of people are afraid to come out. A lot of people are afraid to confess to their family for a, I have a gambling problem and stuff because there's this thing for a, it's not possible. I've known of people who've lost their companies due to gambling, people who've lost their cars, and not in casinos, online, using their phone. A person was sitting at home stacking 2000 for aviator. We know that there are certain forms of treatment that are quite effective. Cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing. We know that they exist and have been found to work. And then we also have what's called peer-assisted recovery. This is really special and very important. I'm routinely told that, yes, professionals are important, and we know that you've got lots of training, but there's nothing quite like someone else who's been where I've been. So there's a particular strength there that can be harnessed, right? So whether it be online support groups or face-to-face -face support groups, people find this incredibly important.